This is Connor with my fifth video, and today I want to talk about how to make a nice laser cut enclosure. Ideally, it'll look a lot like this. So my method is good because it's fast, it's parametric, and it's versatile. Okay, so I'm going to show you basically every step. So to start out, we're going to need these little tabs here that we pattern around the edge. So one thing to note is that actually these two pieces interfere. The reason why is because the laser beam has a certain width to it. So this, when correctly tuned for our laser, will produce a really nice press fit. All you need is a little bit of wood glue to make a really nice, strong, permanent joint. Okay, so we're going to start out by making those tabs. Now, because of the automation I use, it is uh, required that the tabs be on the top plane, centered at the origin, and the long direction along the front plane. Now first, I'm just gonna make a couple of quick variables. Thickness, let's say three millimeters. And let's do razor offset of 0 0.15 millimeters. So I figured out through trial and error that 0.15 millimeters is the best thickness to use for hardboard on our laser cutter. So you'll have to trial and error this for your own laser cutter and material to get it right. Okay, so I'm gonna sketch on the top and let's create this tab. And here, let's do say 15 millimeters. Thickness again. Actually, here we're going to do thickness plus 0 0.1 millimeters. Now, that's just something to make sure that our parts later turn out nice. If you have it, if you do it exactly the thickness then there ends up being a really thin layer. It's something complicated to do with, do with my method. It's just required. Okay, so this is great for the part we're adding. Now we need the tab that we're going to remove. That is not what I wanted to do. I want to do a translate of this tab. I'm going to copy it and translate by XYZ. Okay, so now we have the tab we want to remove. So to make sure that we get this interference fit, I'm going to thicken all the sides of the tab remove. And I am going to remove the laser offset. Okay, great. So now we can go ahead and make our enclosure. I'm just going to do something super simple. Let's just make a box. The method I use is very versatile and you can do almost any shape that you can imagine with it. Cool, there's a box. Okay, so now the nice thing about my method is you start with a solid body and you can choose almost any solid body you want and then turn it into a laser cutter enclosure. As you can probably tell, this is a really nice way to keep things parametric. Now we're going to convert it to a sheet metal model. Thickness should be set to thickness. We don't care about the bend radius. Only other thing we care about here is the direction. So I want it to stay within the bounds of my original box. So I just flip the thickness there. Okay, cool. Here we go. Here's our box. 
Okay, now we're done with the sheet metal. So let's finish the sheet metal part. I'm obsessive about naming everything. Okay, cool. So now we're going to use my custom laser edge tool, which I will link to in the description of this video. So first we need our positive body. That would be tab add here. Now we need our butted negative body. I'm going to explain these a little bit better in a slideshow, which I'm also going to attach to this video. But essentially, the positive body gets added to the piece that butts up against the other piece, and the negative body and the butted negative gets removed from the piece that is getting butted up against. It's a little bit complicated, but I'm sure if you look at my example, you'll be able to understand right away. So now let's start by... start by doing all the faces in one direction. So my automation works pretty well for doing multiple sides. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is you want to make sure that that the same part is butted on all its joints or butting on all its joints. The only way you would get an issue is if you had one part that was butting on some and butted on the other. So I should be able to actually do a lot of a lot of the joints just in two features here. Okay, so now the overhang here, uh, we could either set it to thickness, in which case you get this kind of finger joint along the edge. Or let's try 1.5 times thickness. And in that case, you actually get an enclosed edge, which is quite a bit stronger. So I'm going to go for this enclosed edge. So now one thing to notice is it automatically places them with a maximum spacing of 25 millimeters. Let's just double that to 50 millimeters and see how it looks. That might be a bit high, so let's try... 35. Cool. This looks like the kind of joint that I want to see on the edges. Okay, so this is good. Now I'm going to go ahead and create another laser edge tool. And I'm just going through exactly the same process I did before. And finally, for the top, I'm going to add a single other laser edge tool. And basically, the only difference for this final one is that I'm actually going to use the tab add for both the negative and the positive. And this, for the lid of the box, means that the lid of the box will be easy to remove. So every joint on this will be a press fit except that on the lid. And for the lid, let's just do two times thickness, just so it's a bit easier to grab. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching. And look for the link for the slideshow and the example document in the comments. And I hope you appreciate this, and I hope you want to fool around a little bit with my method to figure out what kind of crazy cool laser enclosure you can make. Thanks a lot for watching.